The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast. That's also a video. I'm Red, and I'm joined today by Zell. And we will be talking about relationships, particularly non-monogamous relationships. You might be more familiar with the terms polyamory, multigamy. Is there such a thing? Multigamy, or, really. Or open relationships. We'll talk about that as well. So I am an expert on such. No, I'm kidding. I'm not an expert. She's not an expert, but she happens to be in one, and that's as much expert as we'll need for this discussion. So yeah, like unlike most of the people in this country, you are part of a non-monogamous, non-traditional, non-conservative, progressive, liberal agenda relationship. Wow, liberal agenda, yes, definitely. Uh, we're definitely on an agenda to yeah. make the world a little bit brighter Aww. for a lot of people. It's. Uh, it's often looked down on uh, by a lot of people, and I hope that we can do something to change that stigma because mm. it's something that most people just really don't understand. And of course, we're not going to appropriate this to everyone. It's not for everyone, but I think a lot of people uh, could do a lot better if they knew more about what it means to be in an open relationship or in a polyamorous relationship. So we're already moving forward, at least in the Philippines. We are more aware of LGBT issues. LGBTQ issues. We have the anti-discrimination bill, open marriage is already in the discussion. And this is just one other thing that we need to learn more about. So let's do that. There are a lot of misconceptions about such open relationships or polyamorous ones. And we are going to discuss those misconceptions to understand it better. But before that, let's just make a or do a def definition of terms, okay. right? So what is the difference between an open relationship and polyamory? So for you, what, what does your relationship, like, mm -hmm. what would you describe your status as and what does that mean to you? Well, I would say that we are in an open relationship and while we have discussed polyamory, nothing uh, uh, around polyamory has happened to us because uh, what we do is we, uh, we're able to have other partners um, either together or apart under certain circumstances. Uh, of course, you know, we're not going to just give ourselves away to everyone, but we do allow ourselves a little bit more freedom than what a monogamous relationship would have. So, so when you say partners, that means sexual partners? Yeah, it could be sexual. It could be um, uh, something that we often do. It's just like yung landi landi lang. Just, okay. just to be flirtatious with another person. Like we, we won't stop each other from doing that. I, um, in the past relationships that I've had, uh, if you were flirtatious with another person, that's going to be frowned upon immediately yeah. uh, by your partner. And a lot of the times, like, it's just really for fun. It's just, uh, it's yeah. uh, all in jest, not really in jest, but... It's a game. Flirting yeah, can be a game. Go, it can go. be fun. And, and it kind of makes everybody feel good and just yeah. makes the, the mood like really light. Because so. a lot of people think if you flirt with someone, yeah. you necessarily want to and have to have sex with that person. I don't know. And you're saying that doesn't have to be a thing. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Like people know people need to know that we also draw our lines. We have yeah. we have lines and uh, depending on the person, depending on the situation, you know, things can go one way or another. It's it's not all, oh, sex here and <laughs> sex let's everywhere. have fun there and all of that. No, no, no. I think before we move on with the definitions, one reminder right. that people have to understand is that people always make their own definitions. That's also In, true. Like every relationship is a different arrangement. That's right. Even within the confines of monogamy or the usual okay. conservative relationship, you would have to negotiate that with your partner. And a lot of the stress in any relationship comes from people thinking, we have to adhere to this certain framework, mm -mm. this certain style, because this is the right style, right? And that's not necessarily the case. Like people have to navigate and negotiate those things over and over again with, with every new partner. Yep. And that's no different with uh, open relationships. So every open relationship 
is defined by the people involved in those relationships. That's so true. Uh, something that I really want to bring out, uh, which is important in all relationships, is communication. All of these uh, types of relationships, monogamous, open, polyamorous, whatever ha you have, uh, they should all stem from lots of good communication between you and your partner or partners. Yeah. You guys need to know what's going on with each other and you guys need to uh, communicate your feelings to one another about what's going on, about what you want to happen, what are your expectations, do you have expectations? Uh, plan ahead, think, you know, think forward, don't just, uh, uh, just do it whatever you want willy-nilly, you know. You want to you wanna make sure that the other person doesn't get hurt and you want to avoid any sort of situation like that because that's what gives it a bad rep. Yeah. And Even it's, monogamous relationships. Yes. <laughs> it's all about consent. As you right. said, communication, right. which, which, you know, if you're not open in your communication lines, and this goes for any relationship, there can't be proper consent. Mm -mm, true. So making the other person aware of what you are getting yourself into, what they are... Uh, getting into by you're getting into something, mm -hmm. you know, those things have to be navigated and handled in a very slow and open way, especially when they're new, there's new territory involved. And let's go on with the definitions. Definitions, right. definitions <laughs> then. So open relationships, like I already mentioned, let, let's start from there. Because let's say you're already a couple and you've been together for a while and then you want to spice things up with, <laughs> with some new sexual partners or one person wants another sexual partner. We'll talk about the reasons for that as we go, get into the misconceptions, but let's stick to definitions first. So you're okay with your partner or your partner is okay with you seeking sexual relationships elsewhere, mm -hmm. then, that, then you open yourself up in that sexual way. Yeah. But again, like let's navigate this very slowly, you might not be okay with your partner forming a romantic bond or a, even an emotional, a, yeah, an emotional of, you know. strong relationship because you know, you're not ready for that yet or that person might not be ready, ready for that yet. So what do you do? You, you, you make the, the terms clear mm -hmm. and you're not for them forming that other romantic partnership because if that other partnership forms, it could be a, already a polyamorous relationship. So there, we have the polyamorous relationship, which means multiple uh, love, mm -hmm. you know, that's uh, from our, like, multiple yes. romantic bonds, that, that all consensual, of course. Yes. And if you're lucky, right, all of you in that triad, it's called the triad, that's another term there. <laughs> if you're just three, but or a threesome. There, there are four, there's you know, five. It, it it's a more. quad. Yeah. If it's, it's more possible, than four, it's it could be a pentad. Is there such a thing? I'm not sure. We, a, we're going to have to look up the definition. Or a squad. Those, you know. I like that. Yeah, a squad. The squad. Like, it works, right? I don't know if that's a thing, but it should be, right? It's cool. Anyway, it, it could also be like the general term, I think, for three or more could be moresums. Moresums. Right? That also is a catchy term. But anyway, like... Nice umbrella term there. I like it. Moresums. It makes and, it a lot easier to describe. Moresums yeah, or squads. What do you think? I think... Tough, right? Because there are squad goals. Are there more some goals? We can make more some goals. Okay, more some make goals. Make it a thing. So anyway, there, there could be a, a triad. Triad seems cool as well because it implies crime and... <laughs> no, crime is not cool. Crime does not pay. Anyway, more some... So if, if you're in that triangle and every one of you loves each other, mm -hmm. then that's a triangle, right? But if only two people are in the romantic relationship with each other. Yes. That's, that's called a V, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, the, the, the attachment is at just at one point. And these two, there's a space there, there's a gap there, and they don't necessarily need to no. be related in that way to each other. So, the and also... is only to that one person. So this one person, if you're the connecting point there, mm -hmm. if you're what these two have in common, you're the hinge mm -hmm. or the pivot. See, it's cool. They have all these terms. So learn about this. It's, it's, so many terms. It's great. So, so you're the pivot, and these are the arms. <laughs> right? These two is are. Is that the term? I, yeah, this those... is new to me as well. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's new to me good too. Good information. Uh, yeah. so, so these are the arms, and depending, like, because there are more sons and squads, right? So right. it's not necessarily just three all the time. So you could form whatever shape you like. So it could be an N or a Z, right? Just to, yeah, it's just possible, to represent it's the connections there. And I don't know what, what you would call it if all points are connected in that 
I am. A, I That's don't know. That's interesting. I would like to meet people like that. If you or you know anybody who is in that type of relationship, let us know. We would like to talk to you and we get will, some insight. We will talk about this at the next meetup. We will invite all the polyamorous, open relationship people that we know, and let's have an or, or uh, a discussion. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I was gonna say orgy. No, I'm oh. kidding. No, I'm kidding. So that works consent, too. I mean, as long as everybody is a consenting adult. Yeah, consent is important. And uses all, protection. And uses, Always. And uses protection. So, I already mentioned there are usually just, you know, the two main dimensions, of course, there could be more. But you usually kind of think of the openness when it comes to having sexual relationships mm -hmm. and having romantic relationships. Mm, that's right. So, you might be open to the sexual, but not to the romantic. Mm -hmm. Also, you could be open to them being romantically involved, but That's not right. more sexually involved. That's so right. all the permutations you can think about, you know, these are all for convenience. Because we want terms, we want those templates because it makes it easier to discuss things. But again, every relationship is different. Always depends on you and your partner and what you guys discuss for yourselves or partners. Sorry. Okay, so now <laughs> let's get to the misconceptions mm -hmm. now. Cheating. Cheating. A lot of people would like to call in a very derogatory way that uh, open relationships mm -hmm. or polyamory is just open cheating. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? Uh, it can't be cheating because cheating implies that there was deceit involved. Yeah. You know? It implies that you lied or, or something like that. And when you're in an open or a polyamorous relationship, there is always... Uh, uh, there, there should always be rules set up, you know. So, for example, for us, uh, we always have to ask each other permission before yeah. we do anything. Um, so it is still possible for one of us to cheat because that is our discussion that if, like, for example, I don't talk to her before something were to happen uh, and get her approval first, then that would be cheating. Yeah. But if I ask her first, you know, she's okay with it, everything's fine, and we talk about it, then that's not cheating because not she cheating. already knows. Like, there's content. Yes. It's exactly. all communicated. There's no surprises there. That's right. And actually, cheating is something that's very common mm -hmm. in a lot of monogamous relationships yeah. because there is no consent, there's no communication. And that's one thing that open relationships directly address. So, for example, there are such things as open marriages yeah. where you're already married, you can even have kids. Mm -hmm. And you're still okay with your husband or your wife having other sexual partners. Mm -hmm. And there's no cheating there. As, uh, afar, apart from, you know, there could be a monogamous relationship that, that's, you know, that, ha that has sex on the side. Mm -hmm. The only difference is it's not communicated. Yeah. So, I, th I mean, ethically, I think uh, an open marriage is better than one that's, you know, presumably monogamous but actually not. So... After that, there's also the, the stigma that open relationships can never work. You know, that the breakup will eventually happen because of all the inherent challenges in open relationships or polyamory. Like one of you will mess up. Mm. One of you would get jealous. That's a big, That's or true. if not the biggest thing. So what's your experience with that so far? So far, uh, what's been really important is the communication, again, because we've had challenges. I mean, it, it hasn't been easy, and it's never going to be easy. No good relationship is easy. You know, you always have to work through things. You always have to talk about what you like and what you don't like to make sure that everybody's on the same page and that everybody has the same level of respect to bring that up to the other person because, you know, you shouldn't be hiding anything from them. Uh, so... If a, a relationship doesn't work out, it's not because uh, it's not because we were jealous or something. It's because we, it, something wasn't communicated properly, and that's why we really rely on communication for that. And so far, despite all of the challenges, we've been able to communicate through them and come out stronger every time. And I think that works for not just open relationships but monogamous relationships too, because. Breakups happen all the time yes. in monogamous relationships. Who's going to lie? Yeah. They often don't work out as well. Yeah. But there are those that do. And there are those that work out too for open and polyamorous relationships. Yeah, a lot of people and a lot of people who criticize and a lot of the criticisms they make about open relationships or polyamory, they're things that apply to monogamous relationships as well. Exactly. Like it, and as you mentioned, it's not like monogamous relationships do not end or do not involve cheating, or do not involve jealousy. 
I think the difference is, I mean, one is not inherently better than the other. Uh, the difference is in open relationships, you're just more open and right. aware of the possibilities, right? And that's something that, that could benefit them, everyone. So another misconception is uh, people get into polyamory or open relationships because they just want more sex or they're just more pr promiscuous. So, so what, what's your take on that? Well, I'm not going to lie that some people probably are. Mm. I mean, like, the, I'm sure that some people do do that for those reasons. But why else do people cheat also? Sometimes it is just for sex. Yeah, yeah. But then sometimes people go into polyamorous relationships for the relationship, yeah. not, not for the sex. Like, it really just depends on the person. Like, it's, uh, I don't think it's ever fair to generalize. And I, yeah. I hate it on myself. Like, oh, no, I'm going to hit the mic. <laughs> no worries. No, but like, I hate it when I generalize anything so to generalize that people who are in open relationships or polyamorous relationships are always are just, always just there, there for sex yeah. like that's not true because that's not why people have relationships to begin with unless you're that kind of person unless you're that kind of person and people are different yeah like everybody's different i think that's the main point here that everybody yeah. goes into a relationship for their own reasons yeah. and sometimes it is for sex and sometimes it's not and if it's just for sex then what's wrong with that that's true too. Right? As long as it's safe, consensual, responsible. Consensual, thank you, yes. Responsible sex. And there, there should be nothing wrong with that. And another point, of course, people like get into relationships for a variety of reasons. And one thing that I think we haven't mentioned yet is this idea that monogamy kind of thinks that one person should be everything for you. Mm. Like you should yeah. be able to rely on one person for all like of your everything. needs, like sex. Like companionship, companionship, friendship, friendship, and, or or work to work even, yeah. to work for you to dress you up, wow. to massage you every night, <laughs> to feed you by the spoonful, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, but you can actually like uh, what open relationships and polyamory acknowledges is you're fine with relying on other people That's for right. other things. So if your partner suddenly becomes less entertaining to you, may, just for example, right? Like maybe you could get that uh, sense of humor or, or companionship or whatever from another person. And, you know, and, and not, it doesn't have to be bad. I mean, if you have sex with one partner and then you get, that could still be good. Mm -hmm. But having sex with another partner could add that variety. So think of it as having a different friend that you talk to occasionally. Right? Like, like, like I like to use that analogy of conversation right imagine if you only had to speak to one person all the time you know that could be boring and yeah there, there there's a point where there's nothing left to learn whereas when you talk to someone else you can learn new things and talk in different ways mm -hmm. and you're enriched and the, the thing that that does too is you learn new things from this new person you can and you can bring that person. to the other That's, person yes, so just exactly substitute sex or whatever kind of dimension you want there That's and right. i think it still applies so another misconception is that open relationships, polyamory, non-monogamous relationships, they're only for queer, you know, LGBT people. They're not for the straight people. So what do you think of that? Lots of straight people Lots do Lots of straight people are in open relationships. It's, it's been a thing for straight people, for lesbians, for gays, bisexuals, transgenders, and everybody in the queer spectrum. It's a... Uh, it's not exclusive. Definitely. It's not exclusive. Just like being in a non-exclusive relationship. Exactly. <laughs> One thing that you mentioned earlier is that you have rules. Mm -hmm. Even when you're in, open, in an open relationship yeah. or in a polyamorous one, you still have rules. And a lot of people think that this means there will be no rules. Mm -hmm. You can just sleep with anyone or have relationships with anyone you like. How true is this? It depends, again, on you and your partner or partners because whatever you talk about, however you guys set up your relationship, that's up to you. Some people are okay with that. Some people are okay with not knowing when their partner sleeps with another person yes. and uh, things along those lines. But then for us, that's not okay with us. So you, you guys just need to know where to draw the lines yeah. uh, within yourselves. What's comfortable for you and what's comfortable for your partner or partners. Yeah, I think that rule setting, you know, not everyone does that, by the way. But I think the, the more successful ones are more clear about the rules. Mm -hmm, yeah. And they, they really communicate with their partner and negotiate. And it's a, a negotiation that yeah, is constant, right. continuous. It happens, you know, it's renegotiated. Especially when, like, new situations pop yeah. up, things you haven't experienced And it's reversible, before. right? Yeah, like, like you, 
what you talked about before might not necessarily apply five years from now. Like we're, our relationship is constantly changing because we're constantly communicating with one another. So uh, whatever little changes might happen in our lives, we take that uh, as a point to listen to each other and to make sure that you know, we don't just rely on what we said before, but we also keep ourselves updated on all of that new information as well. Because it matters. Things change. Yeah, and people change. Yes, Relationships exactly. change. And Dynamics change. All sorts of things change. And you have to be open to that and uh, communicative about it. And I imagine there will be lots of change, especially when there are more variables involved, exactly. more people involved, so that those things have mm -hmm. to be navigated constantly. Also, people make the criticism that open relationships are just for people who are afraid or cannot make commitments or, you know, what do you think about that? There are some people who are like that. Yeah. A lot of people are afraid to make commitments, but I know a lot of people who are in open relationships who are willing to be committed uh, to that one person, for example, emotionally, uh, and they don't want to be uh, emotionally committed to any other person but that person. And they would be even willing to go monogamous for that person sometimes. Like, I mean, you just never know. Uh, it's all about the dynamics of your own relationship. And I mean, we shouldn't rule anything out. Nothing's bad, nothing, as long as everybody's consensual and no one's getting hurt. Yes. Right? And um, speaking of commitment, uh, we forgot some, some terms mm -hmm. that are often used. Uh, primary mm. is your primary partner. Partner, yeah. Right? And then secondary, or maybe even tertiary, is, yes. like are the people who are on the different rung yeah, of like, that hierarchy. Because mm -mm. so. sometimes in a multi like if you're having a multiple relationship, maybe you're more attached to one person than another. So yeah. you have your primary and you have your secondary and like you said, Tertiary. maybe the tertiary. tertiary. You never know. Or, or just a sagigilid partner. Partner. Sagigilid. sagigilid. I don't know. So, <laughs> this, this, I just made that up. There's no, no such thing. Why not? We're making up you know, things as we go along. Yeah. This is new stuff. This is new in psychology. This is new yeah. everywhere. So it's like, cool. why not? Yeah, not a lot of Let's research has been term. done on it. Exactly. And so it's exactly. open to change as well. And um, other people, by the way, do not like that primary, secondary, mm -mm. sagigilid dynamic. <laughs> they, they prefer that... Love is, you know, equal mm -hmm. all around. Of course, you know, just, again... Again, depends. Yeah, you can, really you can choose. Depends. You can you can talk about those things. Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, like maybe if you have sex enough times, can I be up upgraded to primary now? <laughs> like every year, can I get the one no step closer? No judgment on the dynamic That could be, you know, like you could gamify <laughs> that, that open relationship too, whatever works for you, if it, it sounds fun at least. And, and finally... It's just not practical. See, I've read some stories from people who are in open relationships, and they're not saying that it hasn't worked for them, but they have certainly shared that it can be very difficult because you want to, to share enough love to all of the to, people yes, involved. Exactly. Or if it's just sexual, just, just sex to all of the people involved. And you need to schedule all that. And with all you of do. the time constraints Im imposed on us by work, school, Church, church. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm joking. I, I'm just, I'm just thinking. Of course, the, the churches usually judge these sort of arrangements quite negatively. So people in open relationships who still go to church are interesting people. They That's are. Just, they yeah, really are. That. So, so anyway, yes, uh, there are a lot of time constraints, and jealousy is still a thing. It is a thing. I mean. These are not super secure people who are in open relationships. They are, they are still people. And jealousy is a, is a huge emotion. And I read one piece, at least, mm -hmm. when I was doing research for this, like a, a few minutes ago. Wow. <laughs> that said, Great research. That said that jealousy, if it's acknowledged, is better handled than thinking that people in open relationships are jealous. And if, you're, if you go into open relationships with that mindset, and you feel the jealousy and you just shove that away yeah. or tuck that in. No, it, it won't work. It will right. damage you and your partner. Yeah. And, you know, and also, one negative thing that they've talked about is spillover. And what I mean by this is if you're par fighting with one partner and you get into a negative mood because of that, that negative mood could spill over to the other. Uh, and I mean, okay. it can, yeah, it can yeah, work it. both ways. It, you, you fight with one, you get the support from the other, or you fight with one and you also fight with the other. It could happen. Because it could happen. It so could there happen. are a lot of tough things 
And people are saying it's just not, not practical, so it's just a temporary phase, you know, eventually break down. What are your thoughts on this being in one for some time now? Uh, again, it just really matters. Uh, it depends on your dynamic. Uh, I won't, again, it's, I'm not going to lie that it does get difficult. Scheduling is usually like really difficult to do, actually. Yeah, even without, um, the, even with zero partners. Yeah, that's, exactly. <laughs> that's the thing. So like it only gets more and more difficult the more people that you're dealing with. But then you also have to like, uh, you know, set your own priorities. Um, is it a priority for you to do that? If it's not, then don't do it. You know, and if it is, then you know, make it work. You you will make it work if you want it to work. That's that's really usually how it is anyway. Uh, as far as jealousy and security goes, like like Red said, like you can't just keep it inside. You have to communicate it. Again, communicate, communicate, communicate. You're feeling bad about something. Tell your partner or partners because it's the only way. Spillover, that is a legitimate concern, actually. <laughs> Depending on what your dynamic is with a lot of people, like you could actually spill over a lot if yeah. that's what normally happens to you. Uh, or you might get lucky that the other person is actually really good at mm. like handling that type of emotion from you. So like they don't it doesn't end up spilling over, and that would be a really awesome setup for a relationship. So like one would hope that that's something that would happen instead. Yeah. But the hinges, yeah, you know, the, yeah. the pivots should be at least that you know that mature to make it easier i'm not mm. saying that they must be but it certainly it, helps if yeah, one of the partners is mature definitely. enough to handle such dynamics but i think the the, the whole um, point of it for me is i think regardless of what kind of relationship you're in whether it's a monogamous relationship polyamorous or an open relationship you have to be strong for any type of relationship. Yeah. Uh, I can't say that you have to be stronger for one or the other because they require different types of strength and different types, uh, th while they do have a lot of similar problems, they also have different problems that wouldn't arise in a monogamous relationship versus a polyamorous or open relationship. So the point is to whatever relationship that you have, whatever kind of relationship you have, always be open to communication, always be open to changes and you know, do what works for you and talk about it. Yeah. That's what and matters the most. Finally, you know, this is the most pervasive thing, I think. One thing that polyamorous or non-monogamous or whatever couples face is stigma from society. Oh, no, all of these misconceptions you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. You're only promiscuous. Nothing wrong with that, but people think that's, uh, that's bad. You're afraid of commitment. You're bad for society. You're tearing the moral fi fabric. Uh. And you're bringing us closer to hell. You know, stuff like that. And I think it, like one step that we can do is just to have more conversations yeah. about it. So if you are in one, are interested in one, please send your resume. <laughs> no, we will talk Those about it candidates. online. You know, like do comment on the comment section and share this with open relationship, curious people that you know. And we will also talk about this at the meetup. So, yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for being our guest here. Thank you for inviting me to and, speak with you guys. Yeah, and again, next meetup, we will talk about this particular topic. Bring all of your open relationship partners along. Or anybody who's curious about it. Or anyone who you want to be your open relationship partners. Bring them there. They will reject you. <laughs> no, they, they might accept you. Who knows? We'll, we'll try to at least clarify. We'll vouch for you, you know. Yeah. And until next podcast, see you next time.